Twitter Canada. Uh, Cam, maybe you want to just talk a little bit about what you do here, your official title and stuff. Absolutely. So um, thank you for having me and yeah. for visiting uh, Twitter Canada headquarters today. So I'm the head of communication based here in Toronto. Uh, what I do day to day is I really tell the story of Twitter in Canada and how Canadians are using Twitter. So that could be, you know, how is Justin Trudeau using it on the campaign trail? That it could be how are fans talking about the Toronto Blue Jays? It could be how are fans of Shawn Mendes and Justin Bieber interacting? And also telling like product stories. If we put a new video tool, um, you know, if we make changes to like 140 character count, things of this nature, um, that's also part of what I do. So it's really dealing with media right across Canada and talking about Twitter. Very cool, and we've you know had an opportunity to work together closely when I was at CB24, but now I'm doing something different, doing the blogging and the blogging. I sound like my mom. <laughs> the blogging. Yes, on the Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I need some more information about how to best use it to my advantage. You know, for, for bloggers, for entrepreneurs in general. You know, I thought we'd chat a little bit about some of the things that could be of assistance. So what, what do you Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Twitter's interesting because it really is a blank canvas, and you can really make it any number of things. But there are some best practices you recommend for getting the most out of Twitter and the most out of the tweets you put out there. Um, obviously, by nature, you know, brevity is everything on Twitter, which is kind of the beauty of Twitter. You know, it's fast, it's immediate. Um, there's lots of information, but it's always very concise. So I think looking at that really dictates, you know, how you should use Twitter. So. Um, right off the bat, I mean, it's really trying to engage in those conversations that already exist in Twitter and that, you know, a good place to start with the hashtags. Making sure that when you're talking about various topics, you're using whatever hashtags make sense for that conversation so that you're, you know, integrating yourself into whatever else is being discussed. Um, a good rule of thumb is, is probably don't use more than two hashtags because it, it can become a bit cluttered um, if you do. And really make sure the ones you're using you want to make sure they're the best for focusing the conversation on whatever topic you want to engage in. So sometimes, you know, if it's an election cycle or sometimes in the sporting realm, there might be multiple hashtags on a certain topic. It's a good idea just to check in, you know, before you start tweeting with that hashtag, just to see how much it's actually being used, who are the other type of people using it. Just so when you do put that tweet out there and you become part of that conversation, it's really in the same community that you want to be involved in. Um, what about if you are hosting like a Twitter chat or is that the official term? I'm like, Twitter chat, Twitter Q and A, Twitter party. Yeah. I mean, they're all interchangeable. But yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's any like time that a bunch of people hop on Twitter to discuss a certain topic. Mm -hmm. How does one do that? I see it all all the time, and I kind of you know would like to do that to engage my my followers and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's like anything else. You want to be able to promote it. And so sending out some tweets that say, okay, on this date, at this time, always important to specify the time zone, because Twitter's a global tool, so you might have people, in theory, participate in the conversation from around the world. Uh, put out some tweets in advance, typically with a strong visual, to say, this is a topic we're going to discuss at this time, um, you know, on this date. So get as specific as possible. Um, I think a good idea is, again, use the right hashtags so that you're tapping into conversations that are in, out there. And a, a lot of times you'll see uh, a Twitter chat, there'll be some sort of incentive in terms of like prizing or maybe there's like a partner yeah. you're engaging in. Um, I think that's good because it just brought in, A, it brought in the scope of who you can reach if you have a partner. Um, and you know, people like prizing, you know, if there's something, a little something extra in it, yeah. So you, you see, people like prizing, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Uh, so that can be a fun way to get people, you know, a bit more engaged and then you'll give them a little uh, incentive for participating in the chat or the party. Is, is there a, a specific Twitter schedule? Because there's so many of them, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, in terms of like a rule of thumb when people are on Twitter most, I mean, you can really think of it in terms of the work day. So, you know, we do see spikes during morning commutes, for example, because people are on buses or you know, public transit, or hopefully they're not checking Twitter while they're driving, but, um, you know, they're, they're, they're carpooling, you know, there's scenarios where people are playing with their phones, those are times we see a lot of people hop on Twitter. Um, you know, it's pretty steady during the workday, we see little spikes, you know, over the lunch hour, um, and then into the evening, you know, there's, there tends to be like a little dip over the dinner hour, and then it, it ramps back up, uh, especially like weeknights where there's like a big sporting event, or maybe there's like a presidential debate, or, you know, a big 
a point in viewing type TV show. So when Game of Thrones is on, or the Emmy Awards, or you know, Much Music Video Awards, things of that are like tailor made for Twitter. So you definitely do see spikes in the evening. So if you were going to do a Twitter chat or Twitter Q and A, um, I, I think doing it, you know. 8 to 9 p.m. Okay. Is, is a good time. I think 9 p.m. is actually kind of a good time because again it allows a little bit for time zones. So if you're based in Toronto like we are, you might also get some people in Vancouver or Los Angeles or San Francisco who are in a Pacific time zone but for them it would be 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. No, not weekends? Um, yeah, we, weekends I mean are, can be good too. It, it sort of depends on the topic. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, if it's something a bit more like casual, like more lifestyle thing, or maybe it's something that has a special resonance I on mean, the topic. I mean, not just for the chats, but just in general, putting out tweets in, ter in terms of whether people are on uh, yeah. weekend, Saturday mornings, or Sunday night. Yeah, yeah, like I'd say we definitely do see like a bit of a dip in traffic typically um, during the day on weekends, but especially Sunday night, you know. It, because there's a lot of like big TV shows that are on Sunday night, or award shows are often Sunday night, or you know there's Sunday night football, Sunday night baseball. Um, you know these events are very popular on TV that people love live tweeting. Yeah. So what? What about? Uh, I'm tweeting on Twitter, Facebook. I'm putting information out yes. on all various platforms. What should I be thinking about in regards to that and differentiating? Yeah, well, I think you really have to think who is my audience on these platforms because your audience on Twitter might differ a little bit from the audience on Instagram or the other platforms. So with Twitter, for example, you know, anecdotally, a lot of people are on Twitter. They really like to follow the news. They like to be informed. They want to get news right away because of the speed with which Twitter uh, communicates. Uh, they like to be able to consume their news quickly, you know, with 140 characters. So. It's tailoring, you know, the messages and the content you put out to people who have that sort of, uh, you know, I guess, approach in terms of how they like to you know, get, absorb the news that they're getting. 